John Castor here, Fairfax, Virginia's top personal trainer. The secret I wanted to reveal to you today is what's in a Red Bull. Odds are you yourself or one of your friends or family members has had at least once, if not continuously, drank energy drinks. Red Bull being the most popular, I thought I'd break it down ingredient by ingredient. Most cans you spin them around from the back or to the back, and you find a long list of ingredients, many of which are nearly impossible to pronounce. One of them is on the back of Red Bull, as you'll hear me try. Point is, what are these things? What are they doing to our bodies? And is an energy drink really healthy at all? So let me read off first the list of ingredients in a Red Bull. You're going to find your B vitamins, sugar, which is glucose, also taurine, L-carnitine, guarna, inositol, bear with me here, glucuron olactone. So in our B vitamins, this is clearly something that, that we want in our body, but is it really something we need to get from Red Bull? What B vitamins do, they support and increase our metabolic rate, maintain healthy skin, hair, and muscle tone, enhance our immune system and nervous system function, promote cell growth and division, including the red blood cells that prevent anemia, and it also supposedly reduces the risk of pancreatic cancer, one of the lethal forms of cancer when consumed in food. So do we really need Red Bull for our B vitamins? Absolutely not. We should be getting our B vitamins along with every other vitamin out there from more of a natural source. So does it potentially produce some uh, benefit in, as far as energy goes instantly? Maybe. There have been studies that have shown that a, a B vitamin supplementation will help you feel more energetic throughout the day. But getting our vitamins from natural sources is always the best option. Next, we have sugar. We're all pretty familiar with this. Sugar will give you that rush right away, but you also get the crash with it, which is why if you're going to choose to drink an energy drink, always go sugar-free. Next, we have taurine. It's a non-essential amino acid. also comes from food sources such as meat and eggs. It's essential for cardiovascular function and development and function of skeletal muscle, the retina, and the central nervous system. Transports calcium in and out of cells, also pre is also potent as far as an antioxidant goes. But once again, why do we need to get from Red Bull? We don't. Next we have ginseng, which is a perennial root. Supposedly can improve thinking and concentration, memory and work efficiency, physical stamina, and athletic performance. Now these are all claims, of course, which Red Bull and many other energy drinks support, but there's no definitive research arguing that every single one of these benefits has uh, come from drinking Red Bull or any of the energy drinks or supplementing ginseng. If you're going to get some form of ginseng intake, get it from the perennial root itself. Next we have L-carnitine, which is something that Monster loves to just throw on their labels, even though the consumer has no idea exactly what it is. Well, supposedly the the benefit of it is weight loss, which is a claim with absolutely no evidence proving it. The thing is with L-carnitine is that our body actually produces it in the liver and kidneys where it's stored in the skeletal muscles, heart, and brain. There's been research to argue that supplementation can help following a heart attack or for some with angina, but no definitive results have been defined. So. Can this hurt us? No. But do we need to be getting it from a rebel or another energy drink source? Absolutely not. Next we have guarna, which is a plant that contains about twice the caffeine compared to coffee beans. Caffeine intake has proven studies such as improvement in cognition, memory, alertness, and mood. Now caffeine is the one key ingredient that you're going to find in pretty much everything that claims to be a supplementation for higher energy levels, whether it be some powder form you find in GNC as a pre-workout or an energy drink. But the one thing you do have to watch out for with caffeine is that a high and consistent intake can add to uh, putting yourself at risk for osteoporosis, mainly in women. 
but uh, caffeine in moderation is there's there has been proven to be absolutely nothing wrong with it. So caffeine is the one proven ingredient in energy drink that I've listed so far that actually has some direct benefit. I'm not saying you should, you need it, but there has been some positive scientific research as far as caffeine intake. Next we have inositol. Inositol is a vitamin-like substance. It is found in many plants and animals. It's used for diabetic nerve pain, pain panic disorder, high cholesterol, insomnia, cancer, depression, schizophrenia, Alzheimer's disease, ADD, autism, promoting hair growth, skin disorder called psoriasis, and treating side effects and medical treatment with lithium. Now, not every single thing, I, every single benefit I listed here has proven research behind it, but these are just the claims. Um, once again, kind of those, one of the inositol is one of those supplements that eh, maybe take it, but uh, it's not required or uh, recommended necessarily as, as part of your daily dietary intake. So being an energy drink, is it good for us? Maybe. Maltodextrin is the next one. It's used as a food additive. It's produced from starch by partial hydrolysis. Easily digestible, being absorbed as rapidly as glucose and might be either moderately sweet or almost flavorless. So there's starch in your uh, energy drink. Is that good? I don't know. That's up for you to, that's up for you to decide. Last, we have our hard to pronounce leucuronolactone, a naturally occurring chemical that is an important structural component of nearly all connective tissue. Most energy drinks claims that it detoxifies the body. But does it really? I don't think so. I don't know, though. I mean, there's no proven studies to argue this as well. So as you can see here, your average energy drink, especially Red Bull, which is the simplest of all, is going to have a long list of ingredients that claim benefits but have no scientific research backing them. And the ones that are good for you, such as the B vitamins, well, they're coming from synthetic sources. So you're better off taking in your vitamins and minerals from food to begin with anyway. So are energy drinks bad for you? I'm not saying so, but uh, you can get all the same benefits from a well-balanced diet, and uh, you can even get your coffee or tea instead of throwing back an energy drink, which is filled with all these synthetic chemicals. That's it.